Fudayl ibn Iyad, rahimullah ta'ala, was asked a very beautiful question. Check this out. He was asked, مَتَى يَبْلُغُ الرَّجُلُ غَايَتَهُ مِنْ حُبِّ اللَّهِ when, is a person, when does a person reach the maximum amount of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What's the, the end goal? What should we aim for? What is real love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, love of Allah is the purpose of why we exist. And Allah created us to have mercy on us. That's just another way of Allah saying He created you out of love for you, in love of you. And it is His love for you that He has mercy on us. And our role as human beings is to reciprocate that love by loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ibadah, worship of Allah, is really what? Servitude, submitting to Allah. And the only way that really happens is when you learn to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The entire universe is created in a way to teach you about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so that you learn to love Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when these gentlemen, they ask uh, Al-Fudayr ibn Iyad rahimullah ta'ala about this question, when, wh what is the end goal of love? How do we know we really love Allah? His answer is beautiful. It is or it was, rahimullah ta'ala, he said, عندما يكون عطاؤه ومنعه إياك عندك سواء. He says, you will really love Allah You'll have true love for Allah. When? When Him giving you and Him not giving you are the same. In other words, when do you really love Allah? You love Allah when what He gives you or if He chooses not to give you, it's irrelevant anymore. It doesn't matter whether Allah gives you or He doesn't give you. It's no longer a question of your relationship with Allah. Let's be real with each other, dear brothers and sisters. How many times have we made dua and, oh Allah this, oh Allah that, and oh Allah give me this, and it's not coming, and we get frustrated. Why isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me? And that, you know, that's part of the journey. But what that's telling us is my relationship with Allah is really conditional. It's conditional on my seeing of Allah answering my, my dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me. How many times have we looked at what other people have and we said, oh Allah, why don't you give me like, like that person? Oh Allah, you know, I'm a believer. Why do you give a non-believer more than me? See, this person, they have yet to learn true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, true love of Allah is when you look around the world at the, all the variations, those who have more than you, those who have less than you, whether Allah answers your dua the way you asked Him or He doesn't, it doesn't really matter because your relationship with Allah is deeper than the material. It's deeper than what you have and what you don't have, whether Allah gives or He doesn't give. Rather, the, your love for Allah is built on knowing who He is. And who He is is so beautiful to you that that is the relationship, that is the true gift right there. Money, fame, status, possessions, cars, all of that are so insignificant in comparison to that feeling and knowing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beauty through His names and His attributes. And there are many lessons these are, this, this statement of Al-Fudayr rahimahullah ta'ala is teaching us, among which is, you know, how much do you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In order to, to live this lifestyle where whether Allah gives you or doesn't give you, your love for Allah stays you know, the same whether He gives you or He doesn't give you, in order to reach that level, there must be a huge amount of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we human beings, we function through the tangible. And in order to get around that, we need to have our priorities straight. Where we learn that money is not a symbol of Allah's love. So whether Allah gives you or He doesn't give you, that's not how we know whether Allah loves me or not. Regardless of my worldly situation, it's irrelevant to the question of my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to learn to trust Allah to where when He gives you, He gave you because that's what's better for you. And if He doesn't give you, then He didn't give you because that's what's better for you. And where the challenge in this really is, is that the wisdoms behind Allah's giving or His withholding comes over time. It's very difficult to see it at the moment. In fact, a lot of times, you might not even know what the wisdom is 
what Allah was protecting you, what Allah was really giving you. And, you know, that trust is where the crux of the relationship begins to flourish. Also, that our relationship with Allah, it transcends the material. It has nothing to do with that. It's about the closeness to Allah. And being close to Allah is not conditional to the material. Rather, it's conditional to you learning to love Allah for who He is. And learning to appreciate the fact that He is your mawla, He is your guardian. And that He only does for you that which is best for you. A beautiful statement that I came across is, if Allah has brought a test to you, He didn't bring that test to you except that He wants to get you through it. He doesn't bring you anything except that He's going to be with you as you go, as you go through it. And that takes experience, that takes time, that takes you know, wisdom, it takes experiencing life in order to build that relationship. But we Muslims, we need to break out of this material consumer mindset where everything is determined based on how much I have and how much I consume. No, no, our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one that is built on trusting the fact that He knows what's best for you and therefore He gives you or He withholds from you based on you, based on what's in your best interest. It's hard, it's tough, but it's definitely doable. And when you can reach such a level of loving Allah, not only will you feel the beauty and the sweetness of faith, but your relationship with Allah will be so powerful that what happens around you in the world will not affect you, will not influence you, will not be what pushes you to do or to not do. And that is true freedom. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for watching this video. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. If you found benefit in this video, then please like it, share it with other people, and remind you of the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, whoever guides somebody to good, then they get the reward of those who do that good. See you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.